There is a dire shortage of ventilators. NBC's Stephanie Goss with more on these critical machines that can mean the difference between life and death. For those hardest hit by coronavirus, a ventilator can be the only hope. My husband would have died without a ventilator. Yep. 45-year-old Chris Tillett from Connecticut was on one for 10 days. I had no clue what they had done. I was down so low uh, that all I knew is I had a 10-day long, 10 day long crazy dream. They've got you knocked out and sedated. Putting someone on a ventilator is not like flipping a switch and turning on your car. Intubating somebody is a high-risk scenario where you're taking over their breathing from their body. We're going to go in to intubate a patient, and at this time we need to be fully prepared with our PPE. Intubating a COVID patient is also one of the riskiest moments for healthcare workers themselves. An intubation tube is like a really, really wide straw. It's about a centimeter in diameter, and you're putting that into someone's lungs. That actually creates a direct conduit, to a, like a geyser of the virus back out the tube. That's my team in there. Those are that's my family in there doing that. I'm 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 scared, but uh, that's what we all signed up for. Leslie Schlachter is an advanced practice provider at Mount Sinai. Her team normally works in neurosurgery, but in this crisis, it's all hands on deck. They have been in intensive care units, quickly learning or relearning from school what all of this means and how to execute it. What is that like, being thrown into this situation and having to learn like this under the gun? You know, a lot of people say, well, just get the hospital ventilators and we can save lives. And it's not all about the ventilator. It's about everyone behind the ventilator. Kelly May is a nurse in Michigan. The other night I was helping take care of a ventilator patient and I stood on the other side of glass doors and I just took some time and watched him and thought, what was his story? What's his family like? Unfortunately, yesterday afternoon, he passed away at the age of 45. The longer patients are on a ventilator, the harder it can be to get them off. Till it credits the doctors and nurses for getting him back home to his five-month-old twins. They did a lot of things, just small little things that they didn't have to do. They could have just been clinical, and that's it. But they made sure that um, they made me feel human, and they gave me encouragement uh, to continue on. Success stories like his are what they fight for. Stephanie Gosk, NBC News, New York.